Welcome to Trinity Central. We exist to make God central to our lives and our world. You are listening to a recording of one of our Sunday messages. For more information, please go to trinitycentral.org. Amen. Um, I'd love to start. Uh, could we worship just a little bit longer? Let's, uh, we're going to invite Holy Spirit to come and fill us. Just where you are. If you want to stand, you can. If you want to sit, you can. And we're just going to raise our voices. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. If you want to sing in tongues, you can sing in tongues. Come, Lord. More, more, more of you, Lord. You're worthy, God. You're so worthy. Just raise your voices in any language, your mother tongue, English, Spanish, Portuguese, whatever. You're worthy, 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 worthy worthy of all our praise. So we sing to you. More of you, Lord. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Come, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. God, we thank you for your presence. We pray you continue to minister to us. Fill us with your love, God. Fill us with your peace. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your strength. God, you're good. God, you're kind. God, you're powerful. And we love you, Lord. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. If you want to sit, you can sit. If you want to keep worshiping, receiving, you can. It's great to be with you all. I'm going to jump into the, the preach part. So, but just keep receiving from God, hearing from God in, in this place. And I want to jump, start by uh, giving you a report about my recent trip with Global Awakening to Brazil. A Global Awakening is a community of believers with a mandate to empower all believers to live a life filled with faith. Uh, this trip was to serve local churches in Brazil. There were about a hundred of us on the team from around the world, from all different types of churches, uh, Presbyterian, Catholic, charismatic, Pentecostal churches, but all with this same heart for our home cities to see God move in power, heal the sick, save the lost, and for us to catch revival fire in Brazil and bring it back home. Can I show you a quick video?
But it strengthens our faith We pray to be bold and unstoppable To live in our shame yeah. We're billions of hearts Lights in the dark We're never fading out If the nails in his hands Cannot stop a man Okay, great. So, and one, one of the healings that you saw there was um, a wheelchair being held up. This was by somebody, a young girl. She'd had cancer for, for 12 years, severe pain and degeneration in her body. She was unable to walk for three years. She was healed in this meeting. She'd come in a wheelchair and she left walking as the power of God started to be restored back to her body. Amazing, amazing. And uh, we could put up the stats. Oh, yeah, this is the young lady here. So as a team, we, we reached uh, 18,200 people. There were 2,020 healings as we as a team prayed for people. 1,290 additional sovereign healings. That's people who were healed just in the meeting, either with a prayer from the stage or healed as people were preaching without anyone laying hands on them. There were 1,029 emotional healings. That means people healed either from oppression or depression, healed 248 salvations, people giving their lives to Jesus for the first time. There were 26 rededications, people giving their lives back to Jesus. 1,346 people blasted. That means filled with the power of God, filled with Holy Spirit. 49 blind eyes open. In one meeting, a lady had a word of knowledge saying, God's going to open blind eyes. 20 people responded, every single one was healed. Every blind eye was open in that one meeting. 64 deaf ears opened. 47 tumors disappeared as people prayed. Nine lame walking, and the last one, it says 11 metal miracles. Metal miracles being either their screws in somebody's body or rods uh, to help strengthen, but they cause pain and, and actually restrict movement. In that moment when prayer happens, the pain disappears and movement is fully restored. Metal miracles, it could be that the metal dissolves or disappears. And these are just the ones that could be verified in the moment. There were many, many more that happened that couldn't be verified. And personally, I saw healings of reflux, asthma, blindness in one eye, opened clarity of vision in both eyes, restored, hip pain, foot pain, pain in a broken arm healed, several pains in the womb and the uterus healed, depression lifted. Uh, one, one particular healing that stands out uh, on the first night, there was a lady who came for prayer for healing. She'd had arthritis that was continually getting worse for 23 years. And when we started praying, she, could, she couldn't really move her hands. And the pain was excruciating. She said 10 out of 10, but she couldn't afford to pay for the medication to reduce the pain. So I prayed once. The hands tingled. The arms got a bit warm with the power of Holy Spirit. Prayed twice. There was a little bit of movement. After the third prayer, all the pain went. The hands could fully move. She was completely healed after 23 years of arthritic pain. Completely healed. Let me share one other quick video. I hope the audio is not great, but hopefully we'll catch it. In fact, there's no audio. <laughs> That's really bad. 
<laughs> right, that's okay. Leave it. If you jump to the next slide, this lady was sharing a testimony about um, her dad who'd had a stroke, he'd suffered, para this is him here, he'd suffered paralysis on the right side of his body, it was full of pain, which kept him awake at night, he couldn't, he couldn't sleep. And as we prayed the night before, so th this is the night after they came back and we shot the video, um, he came in with a walking stick, he left, not using the walking stick. All pain in his body had gone and he felt lighter. That night, he slept right through completely pain-free and woke up the next day not using the walking stick as strength was being restored back to his body after a stroke. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. God breaking in and touching and changing lives. And one other one, uh, just to share quickly, there was uh, a man who had an uh, injury at work uh, with pain in the hip um, that was debilitating. And out of 10, 10 being the most, the pain was seven. And as we prayed for his healing, his wife watched and poof, he was completely healed, no more pain, full restoration in the hip. And his wife was in tears of joy because God is good. And God heals. God transforms lives. And to experience all of this firsthand and to be a room as these miracles were happening and taking place, it was life-changing. And as we asked for Holy Spirit to come, I remember one particular couple I prayed for, husband and wife. As the wife was receiving, you could see a shimmer on her hands as visible gold dust was forming as she received the baptism in Holy Spirit. And as I came back home, I was asking, God, are you the same in Canada as you are in Brazil? Yeah, I arrived back on Tuesday and we got together as a, as a team, the Grace Overflow team on the Wednesday. We did a short scripture study on Acts 1 and 2, Pentecost, where the power of God comes. Then I prayed. Do you know what happened? Pregnant pause. <laughs> God came. God came. The way, his weighty presence rested on us. One person overwhelmed with the, the weighty presence of God they couldn't stand. We have a very loved guest that joins us as well in our group. They received baptism in Holy Spirit. And, when, and at the end... They shared they'd had pain in the neck from here and through the shoulder. Between zero and 10, the pain was a seven, which is really high. Nobody prayed for their healing. She was completely healed, completely healed on Wednesday. Divine, sovereign healing. So I want you to know that God is the same in Canada as he is in Brazil. He's the God who heals, he saves, and he sets free. He's powerfully at work you know, all over the world, all over the world. In Myanmar, there are thousands being saved. In Thailand, there are thousands being saved. There's mass baptisms of 1,500 people at a time. There's stories of prayer meetings in Africa and Lagos. One million people going up the mountain to pray at a time. God is on the move. This isn't to mention all that's going on in India, Argentina, or the rest of Brazil. Woo. And God is here this morning with power to heal. And so in a moment, I'm going to pray for everyone who needs to be healed right where you are. I want you to put your hand on the area that needs healing, and I'm going to pray in Jesus' name, because we saw healings happen in different ways. One, prayer from the stage. Two, was pray healing as preaching was happening. Three, was prayer by hands being laid on at the end. We're going to do all three this morning. And right now, I'd invite you, if you are in need of healing, please stand to your, stand to your feet. And I, I want to invite you, you can just close your eyes and you're just going to receive from God. I want you to put your hand on the area that, God, that you need healing. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come and increase your power and your presence with us here now. Let your weighty presence fall on each and every person. 
Come, Lord, more. Pour your healing oil from the top of their head right through to the soles of their feet. And in the name of Jesus, I stand against every sickness and afflicting spirit that's passed down through the generations. I break your power and I cancel your assignment right now in Jesus' name. And every afflicting spirit, spirit of sickness, I break your power and I cancel your assignment and I command you to leave now in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. And I pray the shed blood of Jesus over each and every person to be healed now in the name of Jesus and in the name of Jesus, I command all sickness to go, every body to be healed, muscles to be strengthened, bodies fully restored back to your divine order, the way in which you were created to work. I command you to work in that way right now in the name of Jesus, be healed, all sickness go. Muscles strengthened, blood disorders corrected, DNA remapped now in the name of Jesus. Sickness go in the name of Jesus. Body be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now. I want you to check your body, try and find the pain. Is your pain still there? If it's 80% or better, can you give me a wave? Oh, one, two, anybody else? Check, can you find, find the pain? Three, so we've got three people healed. Anyone else? Four, okay, give me a big wave, give me a big wave. Two hands like this, so we can see one, <laughs> yeah, two, three, four. Wow. Thanks. Amazing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Right, take a seat. Take a seat. Take a seat. That is miraculous. God just healed four people. Yes. Four people. We're believing for more. Yeah. We're believing for more. And so, anyone, as we continue through the service, if you start to feel an energy or a heat or a coldness on your body, in the area where there's pain, test it out. See, can you find the pain? Can you find it? Okay, and if you're healed, give me a wave so that we know 80% or better. Okay, excellent. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. The word for power here in its original language is dunamis, from which we get our word dynamite. It's incendiary, explosive, powerful. And the power of God is like no other power. Every other source of power, it ebbs and it flows, increasing, decreasing, and has to generate power by consuming something else like wind, water, sun, nuclear, coal, gas, and when they run out, so does the power. But God never increases because he's always fully powerful. He never decreases because he's always fully powerful. And you know, he will never run out. And he doesn't have any other power source to feed him because he is the source of all power. So imagine with me for a moment, all of the power sources in the world put together, atomic bombs, nuclear power, lightning, the most powerful thing you can. Then in your mind, times that by a thousand, keep increasing that as much as you possibly can. That is a small grain of sand in comparison to the power of God, our God because God is the ultimate divine power. The theological word is omnipotent. Omni, meaning all. Potent, meaning power. All powerful. And he makes that power available to us who believe. Ephesians 1, 18 to 19 says, this is a prayer from Paul. I pray that you'd have the eyes of your heart enlightened to the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might. The power of God is toward us to who believe. Do you believe? God's power is toward you. What unleashes that power or unlocks that power? Well, it's faith. Faith is the key. It's like owning a powerful car like this. 
This, yeah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah, I want to own one of those. Right, this has an incredible 2,000 brake horsepower engine. Okay, our average uh, family car, 180 horsepower compared to this, 2,000 brake horsepower. Okay, and to unlock that power, you need a key. There's no power in the key. The key's not useful by itself until you put it in, you turn it on, you engage the key, and then, boom, the Indian 2000 brake horsepower roars in as the combustion happens. It's the same with faith. Faith is the key that unlocks or releases the power of God. Let's look at a scripture that describes this. It says in Luke 8, 41 to 48, it's probably a scripture that many of us will be aware of. It says, there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she'd spent all her living on physicians, she couldn't be healed by anyone. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his garment. And immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, hey, who was it that touched me? When all denied it, Peter said, master, the crowds surround you. They're pressing in on you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. For I perceive that power has gone out from me. And when the woman saw that she was, was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people why she touched him and how she'd been immediately healed. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And in a parallel scripture in Matthew 9, it says, she'd been saying to herself, if only I touch the fringe of his garment, I'll be healed. She was verbalizing internally what she believed. Amen. And then this faith caused an action where she pushed through the crowd. She touched Jesus and she was healed. Then Jesus says, go, your faith has healed you. This simply means your faith ignited or released the power of God that brought your healing. Her faith in Jesus caused an action. She touched the fringe of his cloak and released the power of God and she was healed. And some say that she couldn't hide in the crowd because the power of God was on her <laughs> so much she couldn't hide. And so she had to come out and <laughs> your faith has healed you. You know, so your faith it will cause an action that will release the power of God into your life and the life of those around you. And you might say, you know what? My faith isn't big. But that's okay, because it's not the size of your faith. It's the one that your faith is in. <laughs> and our faith is in Jesus, the ultimate source of power. Now, we've been talking about healing and miracles and the release of the power of God to see this. But, you know, the power of God doesn't only heal and create miracles, it also brings about change in the life of the believer that is totally impossible in their own strength. You know what? We were never meant to do it by ourselves. In fact, it's totally impossible. That's the good news of the Bible. That's why Jesus came, because it was impossible for us, firstly, to live a life free from sin. So he came, he lived a sinless life, and died for our sins, everything you've ever done wrong, the Bible says it deserves to be punished with eternal separation from God. But Jesus came and he took your punishment to pay the price, to take your place for all those things. He then rose again from the dead, ascended back to heaven. And for all of those who believe this truth and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and have a relationship with him, one day, we'll see him again. But if you don't have that relationship with Jesus, if you don't know, your sins are forgiven. And if you were to die today, you don't know for sure that you have eternal life and you'd go to heaven. Then today, you can be sure. You can give your life to Jesus and make him Lord and Savior. And there'll be time for that at the end. And, you know, as Jesus ascended to heaven, he said, it's good that I go because as I'm going, unless I go, the counselor, Holy Spirit, won't come to you. But if I go, I'll send him to you. Jesus said, it's better that I go. 
Why? Well, because Jesus could only be in one place at one time, but Holy Spirit can be everywhere all the time. And you might think, well, is it possible to be a believer and not be baptized or full of Holy Spirit? Well, Acts 19.2 says, this is a question that was asked to believers. Did you receive Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And that's talking about the baptism of Holy Spirit. So the scripture is clear, you can be a believer and it's clear in scripture that you can be marked with Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1 tells us this. It's like a small down payment made on a house in that it's yours, you own it, and the full payment will be made later. And in the same way, you're God's, you're marked, you're saved with much more to come in the future. And this can't be undone. But there's far more than just a passive marking. There's also a powerful encounter where you are filled to overflowing with Holy Spirit, an experience where you know you've been touched with the power of God, equipped with everything you need to live the life that Christ has to you, to live like him, to look like him in everything. What do I mean? Well, let's take one example. Uh, we find it here in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 8, where it describes how we should love like Christ. It says, love is patient. It's kind, not envying, not boastful, not arrogant or rude, doesn't insist on its own way, not irritable or resentful. Okay, that's tough. But then it goes to a whole new level. Then it goes, it bears all things, endures all things, and never ends. And you look at that and you go, man, that's impossible. I cannot do that. That's right. We can't because you keep loving, keep loving, keep loving. Always not stopping loving. Even your enemies, the Bible says, only God can love like this. And he does. He does it through us. It says in Romans 5.5, 5, God's love has poured into our hearts through Holy Spirit, who has been given to us so we can love like God loves. And it's the same for every aspect of the believer's life, for hope, joy, peace, courage, even hunger for God is caused by Holy Spirit. And the power to overcome temptation and live a holy life all flow from this dynamic filling of Holy Spirit so we can live a spirit-filled life. So in every way, we can be like Jesus, not just trying harder, but when we are filled with Holy Spirit, we look different, act different, then we are light in the darkness, hope to the hopeless, peace to the restless, and we bring healing to the sick by the power of Holy Spirit at work in us and through us, and it's all glory to God. And for many, this dynamic filling brings about the destiny that we were created for. Let's take one biblical example. Uh, let's look at the life of Peter. On, at the Last Supper, where Jesus is about to be crucified, he looks at all the disciples and he says, all of you are going to scatter. And Peter says, you know what? Not me. I'm not. I'm not. I'm never going to deny you. I'm going to be there right with you till the end, Jesus. And, and he really meant it. And when the soldiers come, Peter's the one, he grabs the sword and whoop, he hacks off the ear of one of the soldiers. And Jesus says, no, no, not like that. Picks up the ear, he heals the soldier. But then in that same chapter, just a short time later, Peter denies Jesus three times. Jesus then restores him. He couldn't do it in his own strength, you know, which reminds me of that prayer. I don't know if you've ever heard it. God? I'm doing so well today. I've not fallen out with anybody. I've loved everybody I've met. I've not been anxious. It's been amazing. I'm trusting you for everything. This is an amazing day. In a minute, I need to get up and everything is going to change. <laughs> it's, and it's like that. Okay. But then Jesus restores Peter. He couldn't do it in his own strength. But then we read in Acts 2, 1 to 4. The day of Pentecost arrived, which is celebrated today all over the world on this Sunday. This is Pentecost Sunday. 
They were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided as tongues of fire appeared on them and rested on each one of them, and they were filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Then, after that, Peter stood up, filled with Holy Spirit, preached boldly. Two thousand people were saved. And later we read, even his shadow passing over people healed them. And he never denied Jesus again. This was real. Not trying in his own strength, but filled with the power of God, who he's called to be. And this power is for every believer, empowered by God in dwelling in each one of us. And so my prayer for us today is like Paul, that we'd have the eyes of our hearts open so that we would know the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his great might. Matthew 7 says, Go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, heal incurable diseases, cast out demons, freely you've received, to freely give. This is impossible in our own strength, but God gives us everything that we need. And God wants to do that with all of us, with you, with me, to see Vancouver, Burnaby, Canada reached with his good news through us. Is that what you want to see? A yes. little bit louder. Is that what you want to see? Yes. Should we go one more? Is that what you want to see? Yes. yes. Okay, right, and it says, well, faith and hunger, they draw on the presence of Holy Spirit, okay, because the hungry always get fed. Jesus says, come to me, all who are thirsty, and you will be satisfied. How thirsty are you this morning? Are you thirsty for God to break in on your life? Well, in a moment, we're going to have a time of response for impartation where we're going to invite Holy Spirit to come and fill us, fill you. Before we do that, if there's anyone here who has never given their life to Jesus, now's your opportunity. We're not going to take a long time with this, so I want you to respond quickly. I'm going to ask you simply just to put your hand in the air and wave to respond. If that's you, is there anyone here who's never given their life to Jesus for the first time? Anybody? I want to have that opportunity for you. If that's you, you can give me a wave. No? That's okay. Good. If there is, and you didn't want to put your hand up, come and find me at the end. Next, maybe you're sitting here, and at one time, you were thirsty for God. So when I asked that question, are you thirsty? You were like, yeah, at one time I was. And you were all in for God, but now you're not. Something's happened. You feel you've grown cold and distant. You've drifted. You're not living the lifestyle that you know is right. Today, I want to invite you back into a full relationship with Jesus, to be back fully with him. Is there anybody here this morning who feels like that? You're in that place. If there is, can you give me a quick wave? Because I want to pray for you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. I'm not, thank you. I'm not going to ask people to stand up for this. I, I'm just going to pray where you are, and then in a moment, everybody's going to respond. Is it anybody else? This is between you and God. He sees you. He knows your heart. You're waving to me just so I can, so I know who I'm praying for. So, Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. So let's, let's all bow our heads for a moment. I'm going to pray for our friends who responded. 
God, I thank you that you're a God of love, you're a God of power, you're kind, and you're good. And I pray for each and every person who responded. You see their heart? You know where they're at. And I ask now, God, that you will break in by your power and you'll fill them with Holy Spirit. Everything that's holding them back from stepping into all that you have for them, I break now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of affliction coming or oppression coming on them, I command to go in Jesus' name. And I pray for a release, Holy Spirit, of your power on them, in them, and through them, setting their hearts on fire for you, the living God. Holy Spirit, come and fill them now with more of your presence, more of your love, more of your joy, more of your goodness. No good thing do you hold back from us. And I pray that you pour it down upon them now. Come and fill them. Set them on fire. Fill them with your hope and your life and your love. Thank you that you touched every person who came to you, God, you never turned them away. You see their hearts. You know their desire. And I pray that you fan into flame every good thing that's in them, Lord, that they'll blaze again for you. So rain down, Holy Spirit. Fill them again. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Great. I invite everyone to stand up, please. We're all going to respond. And while you're sitting there or standing, can you check out any, if you had pain before and you weren't healed in the first prayer, have you been healed right now? Check it out. Can you find the pain? If you've been healed, can you give me a wave? Amen. Another two. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I think we're up to seven healings. Six? Six? <laughs> Woo! Six healings. Amen. Good. Thank you, God, for what you've done already. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask uh, Joseph just to play quietly for us. And you can put your hands out to receive. I'm going to pray, Holy Spirit, to come and fill you. Uh, the team from Burnaby, uh, if you want to receive, you can. But if you can pray for people, that would be great if you want to come up here. Okay. Um, and as you feel Holy Spirit come on you, if you start to feel a, a weightiness, maybe a sense of lightness, okay, maybe you feel like crying, or there's a joy coming, that's Holy Spirit touching you, or there's an energy coming, or a heat, that's Holy Spirit. I want you to come forward, and we'll, we'll pray, for, pray for you first, and then we'll pray for anybody else who wants to receive Holy Spirit this morning. So if you want to close your eyes, you can put your hands out to receive, and we're going to invite Holy Spirit to come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. I pray for an increase in your power and your presence right across this place. God, I ask that you'll send your angels to minister to us. Lord, come with your fire. Come with your rain. Breathe. Holy Spirit, breathe. Right across this place filling each and every person with your power. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More. Increase your power. Let your weighty presence come and rest on us. Fill us to overflowing. More, Lord. More. 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 More fire. More power. More peace. More joy. More love. More. 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 More, more, Lord, more, Lord. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep increasing your presence and your power. Yeah, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And as you feel Holy Spirit touching you, just come down to the front. We'll pray for you. Yeah, just push past the person if you're in the middle of the aisle. More, Lord, keep coming. More, Lord Jesus. More, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. More, more Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. Yeah. Keep coming. And then the team will pray for you. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Just keep receiving. Keep receiving. Our hands out. If you feel that weightiness come on you, then come down. We'll pray for you. More, Lord. More, more. More, more, 
more. Keep coming, keep coming. Keep receiving more, more Holy Spirit. Yeah, God, increase your power and your presence right across this place. More, 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 Lord, more. Keep filling, keep touching. Just keep receiving, asking God to come and fill you, to touch you with his power, to touch you with his love touch you with his joy. Thank you, Lord. Come, 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 Lord, come. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yeah. Yeah. And now anyone who wants to respond, if you want to come down the front, we want to pray for you to receive more Holy Spirit. More, Lord. And anybody who wants us to pray, to receive more of the Holy Spirit. God, let your fire fall. You can stay where you are, or you can come down the front. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, 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 more. Yeah. More Holy Spirit. More Holy Spirit. More. Just keep receiving. If you want to come and be prayed for, we're going to pray for you. Yep. Feel free to spread out along the front or come down to this side. If you want to respond, if you want us to pray for you. More, Lord. More, Lord. More. More. Yeah, keep coming. Keep coming in your power. Keep receiving where you are. If you want us to pray for you, come forward. More, Lord. More, more, more. I'm going to sing over us. If you want to raise your voices, you can worship as God comes. God, ignite hearts. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your joy. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More. 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 Just stay in this place of receiving. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. More of you. More of you.